So it's time to do the thing, to take action on your ideas, but then you realize you have no system in place to actually do the thing or take action on your ideas. Well, look no further because today we are going to figure out how to find a path to your own productivity without all the hustle. Hello, hello friend and fellow adventurer. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Kayla. I am a multi-passionate creative or modern Renaissance day woman, as I like to call myself. I am sharing my creative journey with you to hopefully inspire yours. I've got tons of projects going at one time. I like it that way. I'm gonna go slower than everybody else. My growth is very, very slow. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. If that is something that you're interested in, then I encourage you to stick around because I think we have a lot of fun around here and it is a safe place for you to go at whatever pace you need to, to be gracious with yourself in whatever capacity you are currently operating on and hopefully just have a lot of fun experimenting and sharing our art. Before we dive in any further, I want to stop and shout out my amazing patrons over at The Rooted Guild on my Patreon. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your help. This is the third time that I launched my Patreon and this time it worked. I didn't fail and it feels amazing. I love what we're building there. This is a spot for you to see all the behind the scenes stuff that I'm doing, which includes my self-publishing journey, hopefully, if all goes well, coming in spring slash summer of 2025. You can see the behind the scenes of that. I have exclusive content. I just posted a video over there called Confidence Doesn't Have to Be Loud. And then I am building a pretty robust resource library for creatives over there. So if that's something that you would love to be a part of, I encourage you to check it out at the link below, The Rooted Guild. Thank you again to all of my amazing patrons. You you help me keep going when I want to give up, truly. If you're new around these parts, we are currently in a series where I am diving into this flexible framework that I created called the Sidequester Strategy Guide. This is an anti-hustle approach to time management and organization. It is a tool to help you visualize your creative process. It's a six-phase flexible framework, say that 10 times fast, and it's completely retrofitable. You take what you need and you leave the rest. The thing that's great is none of the concepts in this strategy guide are new. It's, it's nothing new. It's just information that works very well for type A personalities. I took it, retrofitted it for people who might not think that way. I'm gonna give us a quick review and recap of where we've been. If you do not need this part, feel free to skip to the next chapter. So remember phase one was our brainstorming phase where we took the limits off of our brainstorming and we stopped filtering our ideas. Then we moved to phase two, which was our catalog phase. And here we learned to value our ideas by capturing all of them because our ideas matter and they shouldn't get lost in the ether. And then we moved to phase three, which was our store phase. This is where we learned what is a no idea, what is a now idea, and what is a not now idea. And we took those not now ideas and we archived them. Then we went into our phase four, which was our prep phase. And this is where we really visualized where we want to go and also what we want the journey from where we are now to where we want to be to look like. Which brings us to today, we are in phase five, which is the craft phase, which again is just doing the thing. For a lot of creatives, when we get to the place where it's time to start taking action and start moving forward on those ideas, sometimes it's not so much that we're afraid or we feel overwhelmed or we're exhausted. Sometimes it's as simple as we don't have a system, we don't have a framework, we don't have steps in place to help us start moving forward. And let me tell you, as somebody who is generally not very organized and not very put together, not having any kind of structure in place really felt 
freeing for many, many years until I realized that structure is my friend. I have a video on that where I talk about how I inspired my personal renaissance by incorporating more structure into my life. As creatives, we often like to run away from structure because we think it's going to put a damper on our creativity. We think that it's going to steal some level of freedom for us. But when structure is flexible and it is used as a tool to help guide us, it really helps bring to life all of our ideas. It really helps bring to life our creativity. And that is what the craft phase is all about. If we're likening this to Skyrim, this is the journey we're taking, right? We are in an open world map. The world is our oyster. We can do anything. And then we start gathering raw materials. That is our ideas. And those raw materials then end up kind of categorized within this internal inventory we have. And then we've got to decide like, well, what are we going to actually craft, right? And that's when we kind of decide what's a no idea, a now idea, not now idea. We take some of those things and we archive them because we realize, you know what, I don't really have enough space or time to really be carrying that right now. So I'm, it's a great idea, but I'm going to, I'm going to archive that. And, and then we start thinking about, okay, what am I going to craft and what ingredients do I actually need to craft the thing that I need to craft? You know, so if I'm, if I'm crafting something that re requires steel and uh, leather, then I need to make sure I have steel and leather in my inventory. Once we know we have those things in our inventory, then we move to the smithy and then we do the thing. We actually craft it. So that is the idea of the sidequester strategy guide moving from taking our ideas from thought into a place of action and so we are officially at the place where we are taking action i'm going to take you through the four steps that i use to plot my path to productivity wow that sounds really cool plot my path to productivity i am very much anti-hustle i am not about redlining it until you die. I believe in rest. I believe in having margin. I believe in accepting that sometimes you have a reduced capacity and you've got to work with that reduced capacity. It doesn't mean you give up. It just means, hey, I can't go as fast or do as much as I want to. I'm all about that. So keep in mind that these four things that I, that I use to kind of plot this path is very much with that margin, with that slower pace with peace and joy incorporated into that entire process. I'm not a huge fan of nonfiction. I prefer my fantasy, horror, and sci-fi books, but one of my favorite nonfiction books that truly changed my life and really helped me as a creative, and you've, I guarantee you, you've heard of it, is Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a great book. I encourage you to pick it up. Check it out at your local library if you're not a huge fan of nonfiction or try it on audiobook. Either way, it's really good. It's really helped me. Some of the things I am going to give you today are ideas that I have pulled and translated from that book for myself. The first step I try to take when I am moving forward on an idea or some kind of creative project is to pick the time frame. When I'm really excited about an idea, sometimes the time frame that I pick is is not realistic. I would love to move a lot faster, but life happens and there's sometimes a learning curve. All of the things we've talked about in previous videos, you really need to pick a time frame that is realistic. I generally like to pick 90 days because 90 days is short enough that it's not a whole year. I'm not like, okay, yeah, I've got to keep sustaining this for 12 months, but it's also not too short. Sometimes 30 days feels really fast. If you ever skip a day, then you feel like you're failing. So 90 days is three months. It feels like a very good balance of the two. It gives you enough time to really experiment, but then also short enough that you can stop and refine, which will be our next phase, and, and then keep going. So then you can kind of see the year in quarters, which a lot of financial businesses do this, the financial world splits the year in two quarters, it's 90 days, and it makes sense why. I like to pick a time frame, 90 days is my preference. Just remember, if your time frame is too short, you might be liable to burn out. If your time frame is really far away, you might get bored. So find a happy medium. It might not be 90 days for you, it might be longer, it might be shorter, but figure out a good time period for you. One note that I will give on this, if you choose to do a really short time period, I encourage you to see it as a sprint. For example, I participated in NaNoWriMo in 2023. That's how I really got it, 
got started writing my fantasy duology. It was a 30 day sprint where the goal was to write 50,000 words in a month and I wanted to hit a daily goal. Now that was something for me that was a challenge. It was a sprint. It really wasn't something that was going to be sustainable long term. So if you are going to do something that's more of a challenge, think of it as, as that, a challenge, a sprint, something that you are going to do just to maybe light the fire, get you in a certain mindset. Otherwise, please do not set yourself up for failure. Choose your time wisely. The next thing I like to do is actually choose my milestones and my intentions. Now, you can call these goals. I personally just don't like the word goals, but this is what they are. We are setting goals for ourselves. What are your goals? For me, I like to say milestones. I'm probably just gaslighting myself to make it sound more fun than it really is to do work and to keep showing up even when it's hard. But I digress. Pick whatever word you want. For me, it's milestones. It's intentions. But these are your goals. You're going to actually set them. I think we all know what SMART goals are at this point. I think you can Google it and figure out, okay, how am I going to set a realistic goal? For example, on this YouTube channel, my goal is to be monetized by May of 2025. That means having at least 500 followers, I think 3000 watch hours, and one other thing. Um, that's a bit of a stretch goal based on my current numbers and engagement rate, but that is the goal. That is the milestone that I've set for myself. I would like to be monetized by May of 2025. That would be wonderful. Whatever it is, remember, set your goals based on the vision you've casted in the previous phase, as well as how you want that journey to look. So whatever that might be, don't set a goal that is going to require you to hate the journey there. Set a goal that is going to help you reach your vision in a way that you have decided you would like to travel. The third step I like to take on this path is to identify areas of resistance. Now, if you'll look at my SideQuester strategy guide, I have this little wheel here that I like to reference just as a visual, but this is the point at which you will hit your greatest resistance. I put the point of greatest resistance there because you are well aware if you are a creative, really, if you are a human, <laughs> once it comes time to actually do the things that we say we're going to do, that's when you're really, really tired. That's when conveniently everything that could go wrong goes wrong. All of a sudden, you aren't sure you really want to do this anymore. This is the time when you are going to hit major, major resistance. I call it the point of greatest resistance. You are going to face a lot of resistance throughout this whole creative process. But this is usually the point at which everything really, really, really starts to work against you because now you have to do it. You're not just envisioning it. You're not just visualizing what it could be. You're not just daydreaming. You actually have to take the steps forward to potentially get there. Much like our time frame, if you have too much resistance, you are going to face burnout. If you have too little resistance, most likely you're going to get bored. So you need to find the right amount of resistance for you and identify where that is going to be. I like to weight lift. So when I'm in the gym, I know that if I want to grow muscle, get stronger, go up in weight, hit new PRs, I cannot be doing too easy of a weight. Otherwise, I mean, it's still good for you, but I'm not going to make any progress. But if I go on and load the bar up way past what I can actually do, I might hurt myself and then I'll be out for the long term. So you need to identify where are your areas of resistance and just decide is that too little resistance? Is that too much? You need to be prepared for when you are going to hit resistance, when you're going to hit these moments that are going to push up against you because you need to plan for what you are going to do when it happens. 
if you've decided, I think I want to be a morning person because I feel like I can get more done in the mornings, which I have another video on that where you don't have to be a morning person in order to get things done. But if you decide that, hey, morning, practically speaking, is the best time, but I'm not a morning person, I think I'm going to become a morning person so that I can work on my novel or my art or whatever it might be. Guarantee you, for some of you, if you are not naturally morning people like me, the first morning that your alarm goes off an hour, two hours earlier than you are used to, that is going to be some major resistance. So how are you going to set yourself up to face that resistance? That probably means going to bed earlier than you're used to. That probably means eating well. That probably means making sure you're hydrated. That probably means maybe setting your coffee pot to brew for you so that maybe you can smell that in the morning, help you wake up. Whatever it might be, if you know that that is going to be a point of resistance, you need to prepare for that. Remember, too much resistance is going to lead to burnout. Too little resistance could lead to boredom. So you need to find where are your points of resistance and determine where there might be too much resistance and maybe adjust, or maybe there's too little resistance and maybe you need to challenge yourself a little bit more. Regardless, you don't need to be afraid of resistance. It's normal. It's a part of how we grow. We need to push through it, but you want to push through it in a way that's going to strengthen you and not destroy you. And the fourth step that I like to take on this path to productivity, I kind of touched on it just a moment ago, but what are the systems you need to have in place in order to do the things that you want to do? So we've got our time frame, right? Our, our box of this is the time frame that I would like to work on these things. We've, we've got our milestones or our goals kind of set like, okay, this is where I want to go within this time period. We've identified where there are going to be some spots like mm, that could be difficult, that could be difficult, that could be difficult. So how do we translate all of that and actually create some kind of rhythm, some kind of system for ourselves to actually make progress? I think this is the point which a lot of online coaches and gurus are going to give you a, uh, you know, step by step formula. Here's the thing, though, is that works for some people and it doesn't work for others. I think ultimately you have to decide what are your systems? What routines do you need to put into place? Most of us already know what we need to do in order to make progress. It's more about rearranging our lives around the priorities that matter to us. That means that you're going to have to start taking your art, your creativity seriously enough to prioritize it. I could give you some sort of formula, which to be honest, I've never found a formula that has worked for me. That's why I created a flexible framework. I could give you a formula but at the end of the day, you're not going to do the formula until the thing you want to pursue matters enough to become a priority. This is not meant to shame you. Again, you can make your goals as small as you need to in order to make any sort of forward movement. But in order to craft a system, a rhythm, whatever it is for you in order to start making progress, you need to decide and determine, am I going to make this a priority? And if I'm going to make it this a priority, what do I need to let go of? Where do I need to shift some things in my schedule? Do I need to be scrolling less? Do I need to turn off my notifications on my phone? Do I need to watch less TV? Do I need to get up earlier? Do I need to be going to bed earlier? There are ways in which you can look at your life and see things that you need to readjust in order to prioritize the things that matter. I think a lot of the examples that are often given of here, here's this formula to go viral in a week or in 30 days, those are great, except it doesn't take into account that some people just don't have the capacity for that. And you might not be at the place where you can really go after a massive goal. So let's say you want to write a book. Maybe your goal needs to be, I need to write 100 words at least five times a week. So I would like to write 500 words in this week. I would prefer to set those up in smaller increments, which means, you know, I'm, I, need to, I need to have a writing sprint of about 20 to 30 minutes. If I can find 20 to 30 minutes in a day, 
I'm going to prioritize that. I'm going to invest in my creative endeavors by setting aside 20 to 30 minutes and making sure that happens. Start your system like that. By prioritizing something that's important to you, make it so minuscule, make the milestone so minuscule that all it takes is between 20 and 30 minutes a day, start there. And I guarantee you, once you start there, these systems, your own systems that you've created, these own your own rhythms will start to come to the surface simply because you are prioritizing the idea that matters to you. Well, friend and fellow adventurer, I hope this is helpful. And I hope this was an anti-hustle approach to creating some sort of system to help you actually start doing the thing, pursuing your ideas. There are plenty of great videos and books and classes and, and, and master classes that can teach you how to move faster. My goal for you is to always figure out a way to move more consistently in the long run. I hope you always are seeking sustainability and long-term growth. I hope this helped with that. If I could leave you with one little tidbit here is it is okay to pivot and it is okay to quit, but I encourage you for this phase, this is going to be a phase that I am going to challenge you to give it enough time, give it enough time to grow. That's why I say 90 days tends to be a good opportunity to see if this idea is viable more long term. But give it a chance. Give your ideas a chance to grow. Below, I have even more what I call anti-hustle book recommendations, specifically for multi-passionates, for people who struggle with traditional time management and organizational skills. Uh, those books have been really, really helpful for me. You can grab more down there. I also have a couple of channels that I really feel are life-giving, especially to people who might be moving a little bit slower than maybe the mainstream media likes to portray in our social media feeds. And finally, next video will be our last video for the side quester strategy guide, our refine phase. I'm really, really excited, but I want to know from you in the comments, what are some systems, some rhythms that have really, really helped you make progress on your ideas in the past? What are some ones that maybe weren't very helpful? Maybe they were damaging. And let me know if you think that this approach would be viable for you. If you feel like this would be helpful for you, I'd love to know your thoughts. I will see you next time, friend. Bye.